this is something that I use like all the time. It's an audio oscillator. It simply just generates a test tone so that when you're done with a circuit you can test it and see if it passes a signal and so on. And so this is something that I made over 15 years ago now. I built this in May of 2009. I'm sorry, 2003. And um, you know, now this is back before the days when you could just buy like a little $5 kit off of Amazon or something. And this is before Amazon existed and five million people were selling these little kits for five dollars on eBay. You know, I had to come up with something on my own. So the first place that where I discovered a, a simple audio oscillator circuit was on uh, R.G. Keen's website, geofx.com, and this was his twin T oscillator that um, he had up there. It's not on his website anymore for some reason, but I like this one because it has, you know, a one volt outlet and a hundred millivolt outlet and a ten millivolt outlet, and that comes in handy for, you know, testing various signal things with various signal strengths and so what this is is this is actually an old computer AB switch box that there was a time when you could go to the thrift store and you could pretty much count on finding one of these sitting back where they have their miscellaneous TV and electronics and that kind of stuff and so this was sitting at the thrift store one day and I bought it probably for like three or five dollars just to get the enclosure and I gutted it of course to create this thing. So it's 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 steel so it's going to be nice and shielded. I made some graphics for the front and so basically this this is early on in my electronics building uh, journey that I've been on and so <laughs> This is a little bit more, there's more going on in here than there needed to be. I mean, I could have built this all on one circuit board, but anyways, I got a little power section right here with a big old filter cap, so I made sure that the power is really filtered. This is the oscillator circuit itself, and uh, have an on-off switch with an LED to tell me when it's on and off. Sometimes I'll leave this on. Um, so I think I added this thing at a later date so that I, I make sure that I didn't leave it on all night or all weekend. And so I have this little rotary switch that I can select between settings. So basically the zero volts, it's like muting it. And uh, I typically would use the 100 millivolt setting. I've got a, a mono jack for a quarter inch cable, which is what I typically use. I got a BNC jack, which is connected to the same um, output here and then this little volume pot is what I use to get the output voltage exactly at these readings. Uh, I'm really close to 10 millivolts, 100 millivolts and 1 volt with this so um, and then the one the one other thing that I should mention is I um, and powering it with the wall wart that's like a little eighth inch jack type like what the DOD, some of the old DOD pedals use which you know in this case I just probably had a wall wart that I also got at a thrift store for like a dollar or something and I just use it to, to power this project up and it's perfect because I get almost exactly 9.5 volts um, after my series diode and stuff, which is about what a 9 volt battery measures when it's new. So, anyways, I also have a signal generator that uh, will allow me to sweep a range of frequencies, which, um, when I'm really wanting to know what's going on in a circuit and I want to test all the different frequencies that you get out of a guitar, I'll use that. Um, you can find those on eBay, like an old Heath um, SG1271 or something like what I have. That's 
is also a real handy thing to have. It also do, does uh, sawtooth and square waves. But this, this for just a general test tone, just quick, does my circuit, pass a signal, and just for general testing where you don't care about sweeping frequency ranges, this works great. Um, you know, nowadays, I mean, you go, like I said, you can go on Amazon and buy a kit for like $5 and just have this little board, you know. But um, this puts out, it's supposed to be 1 kilohertz. I measured it. It's actually about 880 hertz. But, you know, it's, it's still just fine for my purposes. And over here is my, my Heath Schlumberger SD1271 function generator that I was mentioning earlier. This has an uh, attenuation switch. You can go all the way from minus 50 dB to zero. It's got a, you know, a BNC output. And then you have a frequency range here. And you can uh, vary the range of the frequencies with this dial. This one you can get sawtooth, square wave, and sine waves. And uh, I bought that off eBay some number of years ago. And I also use that one more frequently these days. But really, if, if you're going to be doing uh, guitar effects, a lot of guitar effects building or tweaking things, you really need to have an audio oscillator. So, I mean, I, I've used this guy here just when I was professionally building pedals. You know, I'd use this to test each pedal. Make sure it's passing a signal that sounded right. And uh, I mean, I've used this thing just so many times. I, I'm surprised this switch hasn't worn out. It feels a little dodgy down the bottom position, but it still works. I mean, I switch this thing off and on like thousands of times, probably. So, yeah, build one.